Hello. This is probably the most serious video on this channel so far. Actually, I graduated three months ago. I had a plan to share this video after I got my diploma. However, there was a winter storm in January. My diploma got lost in the mail. I had to contact the school for a reshipment. I finally received it last week, and now it's time to share it with you. How did I earn this Master of Science in Analytics degree while having a full-time job? This video will be long and cover many topics. I have listed chapters with the timeline that you can skip to the section you are interested in. Remember to subscribe, like, and comment our channel before you start. At the beginning of 2018, I started to have the idea of getting a master's degree. First of all, I had been working for about five years at a time. I had a senior level data analyst position and I felt my career had hit the bottleneck. I was way too familiar and comfortable with everything I was working on at that time. That is, I was living in my comfort zone for a while. It's getting a bit difficult to have a significant salary bump through the promotion. I started thinking about whether to continue my studies. An excellent friend of mine had this idea at the same time. She definitely gave me a push that I look at more seriously and put into action. I earned my undergrad degree in statistics and applied math. The courses were mainly concentrated in the fields of statistics, math, applied math, economics, and computer science. I took basic C++ and Java courses to satisfy the graduation requirements for my undergrad. Statistics and applied mathematical courses mostly used R and MATLAB. Data modeling was one of the concentrations in the 400-level statistic courses. My career has been around data analysis since the beginning. Started with an internship and developed my career from the same financial company. I had the lead data analyst title before graduating from this master's program. The first step I took was researching what was available. My undergraduate background is in STEM, which is science, technology, engineering, and math. As we all know, Seattle is becoming a second home for tech companies. People around me would be more interested in becoming a software engineer. The better journey to reach to financial freedom. However, I don't think I am suitable for this type of work. So I was mainly searching for data related programs and being loyal to my background. I still remember my friend shared with me a table she put together comparing multiple factors for several online programs, including schools, majors, tuition, basic requirement, application deadlines, etc. There were three schools I was interested in at that time. The other two, one of which is a data science program at the University of Illinois. Another is also a data science master program at Northwestern University. The Northwestern University ranks the best, uh, which is around the top 10 in the U.S., Georgia Tech is slightly better than the University of Illinois. However, the specific ranking depends on the particular major. Combined with school popularity, professional ranking, and cost performance, I applied to both Northwestern University and Georgia Tech. However, in terms of tuition, Georgia Tech beats Northwestern. The good friend I mentioned earlier also decided to go to Georgia Tech. So after I received offers from both, I chose Georgia Tech. Just a quick hint, the total tuition for Northwestern University estimated to be $57,000. How much for Georgia Tech? Keep watching. For the requirements, international students need to complete either IELTS or TOEFL to ensure that they can accept a truly English teaching environment. Because this program is taught entirely online, it will not provide visa assistance to the U.S. Basic requirements for everyone, including having a bachelor's degree and have taken any college-level courses in statistics, programming, or advanced mathematics. GRE or GMAT test is optional, and more master programs in the U.S. are not requiring those two tests, especially for people with working experience. 
the school will value this more. But for those who have just completed undergrad, taking either GRE or GMAT and getting a better score can increase the admission feasibility. Admission runs twice a year in spring and fall, two different deadlines each for the regular and the final deadlines. Spring application deadlines are generally between June and August. Fall runs between February and March. There is a scenario that the enrollment is full for the applied semester, but you are admitted to the program. Registration can be delayed until the next semester. You will need to submit the online application along with $75 application fee. For international students, it's $85. Also, submit attachments including undergrad transcripts. Transcripts can help school understand your educational background. International students also need to provide proof of TOEFL scores. Personal statement including why are you interested in this program. Three letters of recommendation. I asked my direct manager, his manager, and a previous manager to help with it. Applicants need to fill in your recommender's contact information. The school will email them the instruction to complete the recommendation letter. So be sure to communicate with them in advance. You must be very interested in tuition costs. As I said at the beginning, this program has good cost efficiency. $275 per course credit. Graduation requires 36 credits plus some miscellaneous fees. It only costs a little over $10,000 to complete this program. Many people may not know, most of the companies generally have more than 5,000 in tax incentives per year for each employee's education cost. Companies are willing to see you advance your career by learning. So for many people, including me, tuition for this program is fully reimbursed. Sounds good to you? This program offers three tracks. I'll go over what's on the official site. The analytical tools track focuses on the quantitative methodology, how to select, build, solve, and analyze model using methodology, regression, forecasting, data mining, machine learning, optimization, stochastics, and simulation. Business analytics track explores the understanding, framing, and solution of problems in marketing, operations, finance, management of information technology, human resource, and accounting in order to develop and execute analytics project within business. Third one is what I got. The computational data analytics track explores a deeper understanding of the data, including how to acquire, pre-process, store, manage, analyze, and visualize large data sets. The significant differences are two track elective courses worth six credits, making your choice based on your focus. A minimum of 36 credits are required to meet graduation requirements. There are 10 courses with three credit each and one six credit practicum course that I'll talk about in the next chapter. The 10 courses, including three fundamental courses, two advanced core courses, two statistic courses, one operations research course, and two elective courses related to your selected track. Among them, these three fundamental courses and two advanced core courses are set to be the same for everyone. Other categories have many course selections for you to choose. So here are the courses I took. I'll have the link in the description box for you to find out more. Now you're probably curious, how long does it take to finish this program? I had a full-time job while taking this program. The amount of workload for some courses were plenty. I basically took only one class per semester. Georgia Tech is semester-based, that is at most three semesters a year. I had only one semester that I took two courses. So it took me 11 semesters to finish. That is a little over three years. Full-time students would have more flexibility. Taking two or three courses in one semester should be doable. That is fastest four to five semesters, little over a year to graduate. 
Everyone's background and experience are different. Therefore, the time and effort required for each classes vary from person to person. For example, I took a regression analysis course for one semester because I had a good foundation built from my undergrad stat class. I spent surprisingly little time per week. I chose that course because I traveled back to China that semester. Courses and trip were not interrupted at all. But some students don't think that class is easy. There was one course required to write our own algorithm. Each assignment took me twenty to forty hours, and we had a weekly assignment. I basically spent all my weekend on those assignments in that semester. So do your best. Now let's talk about this six-credit course that everyone is curious about. Similar to graduation thesis, if required in other schools, you can choose projects offered by the school, which are sponsored by other companies. You can also do a project with your current employer. Make the decision according to your goals. If you're similar to me, when you already feel the bottleneck in your current position, or you may want to change jobs in the short term, then it's not a good idea to choose a project from your current employer. From my own experience, I accepted an offer from another company while taking this practicum course. I was very fortunate that I chose a project offered by the school. Generally, there will be more than ten topics from many companies to choose from. Each project provides an overview and office hours before you can make your decision, including theme, tools, the number of group members recommended, etc. What impressed me the most was that we had a NASA project in the selection pool, but because I was working in the financial industry at that time, I chose a topic related to loan default or prepay prediction. Teamed up with another student to complete the project. I can't share too many details about our own project since we signed a non-disclosure agreement. Finally, a summary. One common question that I can think of now: you may be curious, what's the overall experience with remote learning? The stereotype is that in person should always be better. However, what happened in the past two years? Almost all schools are changing in person to remote education due to the pandemic. Lessons are pre-recorded. There are office hours organized by TA to answer your questions each week. I don't feel any disadvantages from learning remotely. Instead, there are more students you can make the connection to to expand our professional network. The most direct outcome for me is I accepted a new job offer upon completion of the program. Whether this degree can help you get a new job, the answer is yes. Just a matter of how big of the help. Some courses require team projects. I think this is beneficial. You'll learn different ways and skills to solve problems from other perspectives. Last, the program is super cost efficient. Of course, the computer science program offered at Georgia Tech is actually even more cost efficient. You may want to research if you're interested. That's all for this video. If you have any questions, you can leave a comment. Hope this video is helpful.